In today's video, we're making backdrops. Nskeeler454 here and welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I mentioned that I couldn't really continue on with the layout until I got some backdrops. Well, today is the day. Now, I spent countless hours on the internet searching for the correct backdrop that's going to work for my layout, and there are several different websites out there. I recommend you check them out. And the one that I found that was going to work for me, uh, at least for the pictures in the, in the orientation that was going to work best for my layout, it was going to cost me upwards of $1,200 Canadian. And I just can't justify that cost for some pictures on a train layout. So what I did was I went online and searched around and I got some high resolution pictures. Now these pictures, of course, are just for my own personal use. They are not for uh, a business setting or a public viewing or a train show or anything like that. It's for my own personal use in my own personal home. Um, so I took those pictures, I threw them into Photoshop, I edited them, I blended them together in a way that I liked, and I sent those down to a local print shop and they managed to print them out for me. And if you ask me, it came out really good. I'm very happy with the uh, print quality. And how much did it cost? $268 Canadian. A huge reduction in price compared to what it could have been if I ordered it from one of these other websites. So now this doesn't mean that this is the way to go for everybody. Check out, you know, what's out there. I mean, there's no right or wrong. Do what's best for you, but I do recommend at least looking at your options. So the first order of business is going to be to bring the benchwork out so I can get behind it and then uh, I can really start to figure out how I'm going to lay this out. Because the first section of my backdrop is mounted a few inches inside the benchwork edge, I needed to cut the foam in half. I started by positioning the foam exactly where I wanted it and then clamped it down so it wouldn't move. I precisely marked my cut line to where the backdrop would go and then used a sharp utility knife to cut it. So I struggled a lot with trying to figure out how to mount the backdrop inboard onto the benchwork and still make it so it's removable. So I thought about these L brackets, but again, if I mounted that, it's pretty much going to be permanent. So the solution I came up with is to attach these stakes to the backdrop or to the backboard of the backdrop. And then I'll just cut a couple of grooves into the benchwork and these will slide down into it and then I can secure it below the benchwork and hopefully that will be secure enough to keep it upright. And then if the time comes I want to pull it out, I can just unscrew it and remove it. Let's see if this works. The wooden stakes are a quarter inch thick so I used a quarter inch drill bit to make pilot holes and then cut out the remaining bits with a jigsaw. I measured the placement of the stakes to be as accurate as possible it was important to drill pilot holes before inserting the screws to prevent the wood from splitting. I used a countersink drill bit so the heads of the screws wouldn't interfere with the backdrop pitcher. So I got the backing for this backdrop in place and honestly it took a heck of a lot longer than I expected. Mainly because I had to sand down these little blocks that are spacers that go between the stakes that hold this up and the benchwork itself. Uh, basically what I had to do is thin these out each one to its own specific width but it was required to ensure that this was square and as you can see it's pretty good and if you look down it's pretty straight and it's also pretty strong. So I can now start installing the rear backdrop which you would think would be very straightforward. It's not going to be as simple as you think. So I cut out this section right here, which is going to be the backdrop that goes right there. Again, I have a modular layout, not to mention these uh, boards are only 96 inches long at max, so I have to have two pieces anyway. So this right here, I marked this line right here as this is going to be where uh, I have my, my backdrop paper, and this is the mounting surface that goes to the back of the, the frame or the, the benchwork. The problem, or the tricky part, is going to be 
when this is back here, this edge right here, or this corner has to line up perfectly. Otherwise it's going to look weird. Not to mention this edge is going to have to be as tight as possible to the, the board that's going to go to the right of it. And it has to be all square. Otherwise it's going to look really, really funny. So the first thing I did was I, I leveled out this section right here to each other so it can be as straight as I can get it. And now I just got to play around with it until I get it right. So I'm sure this is going to be quite finicky. So I got it up. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge, especially because I was doing it by myself. But I persevered and got it up. It's not perfect. There's a bit of a wave in it. So, you know, if you can see. But overall, it's not bad. Um, the next step is to pull it down. But I, I'm going to have to notch this out. To make sure I still have access to my panel, even though this table's going back over that way, I'm gonna have to cut this about four inches this way and ten inches down. And over here, I need to cut out the hole here for the tunnel because that's gonna allow access from the trains to go front to back. And then this little section right here, I knew this was gonna be a problem right here, but what I can do is maybe make a little T clip or something to hold those together but I just need to make sure I get my measurements correct because that in there is going to be my starting point for this backdrop over here so and I'm only going to have basically one eighth of an inch overlap so there's really not a lot of margin for error so I will start on that and we can get to gluing down some backdrops my backdrop is made out of poster paper so I had to use a spray adhesive to glue it down I first laid down some newspaper to collect any overspray of the glue, I then wiped down the surface with the damp washcloth to remove any contaminants. I spent a fair amount of time trying to get the poster paper in the correct position. I used some small pieces of painter's tape to keep the backdrop in place. I then peeled up a portion of the backdrop and sprayed on the adhesive. I am using 3M Super 77. Now you must have your paper exactly where you want it as this stuff is pretty sticky and the paper will not want to be moved once it hits the glue. I used a plastic squeegee to help lay the paper down evenly. I later found it was best to cover it in a paper towel to prevent marking the picture's surface. I then lifted the other side of the paper, sprayed it with adhesive and laid it down. I wiped down the surface of the pitcher with a dry shop towel to remove any overspray and press down any air pockets. Repeat the process for all the backdrops. I think photorealistic backdrops can really bring a new depth to your layout. For me, they let me move forward with bringing my layout to life. To see that progress, be sure to subscribe, and if you liked the video, hit that like button, and thanks for watching.